Hey guys, Aaron here. I've been a lineman on the East Coast of Canada for 16 years now. Today I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the electrical entrance and the meter on the side of your house, so that one day you don't get caught off guard with a hefty repair bill. Now before I get started, I want you all to keep in mind that this video is to be used as a guideline only, as regulations may differ depending on your geographical location. First thing we need to cover is who owns what. Your local power company typically owns the meter. The connections between the overhead wire and the entrance wire. And the overhead wire itself, all the way out to the transformer. For an underground installation, however, it's the customer that owns and installs the wire from the meter box to a nearby splice box, where it then connects to our system and eventually to our pad mount transformer. Even though your power company does not own the wire in this case, it must still comply with their specific regulations, unlike this particular setup. As a homeowner, you also own the clevis, or the wire's attachment point. You own the wires which enter the mass pipe through a weather head and travel all the way to the inside of your house and your panel. The pipe itself, both on the top and the bottom side of the meter. The meter box, which must be properly attached to the home, and any other associated hardware with the installation. Now that bit of information is extremely important, as it is your duty as a responsible homeowner to have all of your components maintained or replaced when needed by a qualified electrician. The last thing anyone wants to show up to is a completely preventable house fire that may have been caused by a 100 year old electrical installation. So where do you start? How do you know if your system is safe? Well. If something looks fishy, if your lights are blinking or going dim and bright, and it doesn't look like the sky is falling down, it doesn't cost much to have both a service lineman from your local power company and a certified electrician inspect the electrical components of your home. A situation like this can be extremely dangerous. Here is another example of an extremely dangerous setup that was likely installed temporarily during storm work. Hazards such as this, once identified, must be immediately repaired and brought up to code. Speaking of storm work, this is when oftentimes homeowners are surprised with their first large bill for accidental damages to their home. Something as simple as ice buildup or snow sliding off the roof can easily cause hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in damage to your electrical entrance. If this happens, you must call your local power company immediately and do not touch anything. In case of an emergency, such as arcing or fire coming from the lines to your home, you should call 911, whereas trained firefighters will likely be more proficient in keeping the area clear and safe until the power company arrives to disconnect the damaged lines. Once disconnected, you are responsible for hiring a certified electrician to complete all necessary repairs to your home and the electrical entrance before the local power company can reinstall electrical service to your home. Everything I just said also applies to trees. Now, trees are an extremely sensitive subject between homeowners and power companies, so I'm only going to touch on this topic briefly with a few key points. Also, I do want to keep this video relevant to the electrical entrance in your home. So, if a tree that you own falls and rips the lines from your home, you will likely be fully responsible for any damages, be it during a storm or not. You can easily prevent this type of damage to your home and our lines simply by controlling the growth of the trees that you own. Do not plant trees near or underneath existing lines. If there is already a tree on your property that you feel needs to be removed, you can call one of several professional arborists who must also be trained and certified to remove trees and limbs near power lines. Another approach offered by most power companies is we will actually remove the lines feeding your home so that you may safely drop any large trees in the area. Once the work is complete, we will then reinstall the lines feeding your home. Unfortunately, accidents do happen. If a tree in your property does fall and make contact with power lines, do not touch anything. Phone your local power company immediately. Upon their arrival, the lineman will make sure everything is safe. Once safe, it will then be your responsibility to hire a certified electrician to make any necessary repairs. One thing that I cannot stress enough, and I'm kind of repeating myself here, is that if there are trees in your property that are close to the lines that you would like to see trimmed up, do not attempt any of the work yourself. 
Always consult with your local power company for guidance in the matter, or if one is certified or a barist. You hear that? The hum? That's it arcing. Now that we understand a little more as to who owns what, and what you as a homeowner are responsible for, there's a catch. Yes, you do own the meter box attached to the side of your house, but that doesn't mean you can touch it. Once a meter is installed, the box will be sealed. Opening or tampering with your electrical box is not only very dangerous, but can also lead to some pretty severe consequences. These consequences may also include fines, criminal charges, or the disconnection of power to your home. And once tampered with, if your home is reconnected, you may have several follow-up visits to ensure compliance. So what happens then if you need to remove your meter just long enough to install new siding behind it? Or if you're building a deck? Simply call your local power company and we can de-energize the service for you for the day. That way, you can have a certified electrician make whatever alterations are necessary for you to proceed with your renovations. Depending on regulations in your area, there may be permits or small fees associated with this. Just don't forget that before your meter gets hooked back up, all work must meet local and state electrical codes. That means don't be building stuff too close and make sure whoever is doing the work actually knows what they're doing. Now that you're aware of how things are supposed to work, you won't get caught off guard when some shady contractor tries to convince you that, nah, you don't need a permit for that. Just take the sawzall and cut the screws out from behind the box, then we can shove the siding in behind it. Or we can just build a box around that. Taking shortcuts like this can lead to several problems down the road, such as having your power disconnected for improper installations or for blocking safe access to our equipment. Speaking about access, don't try and hide your meter behind trees and stuff. Intentional blocking off of the access to your meter not only violates terms and conditions, but can also cause a safety issue if ever a lineman needs to disconnect your home in an emergency, such as a fire. Also, it can lead to long-term issues, such as excessive moisture and water damage. Here's an example of a homeowner that really got duped. Their contractor built an entire extension of the home, assuring them that everything was okay with their electrical entrance. The wire was literally left laying across their roof causing a very dangerous situation. Unfortunately, once discovered, this homeowner had the headache of having to hire an electrician immediately to relocate the electrical entrance, costing them thousands. So what if you're just doing everyday maintenance on your home, such as roofing, painting, or even clearing the gutters? Your safety is our main concern, and we certainly don't want to have to shut your power down for a week while you pick away at some chores. Luckily, most power companies are willing to cover up your low voltage service wire with a special protective wrap. While this still isn't meant to be touched, it is an extra barrier that will allow you to do simple tasks much safer near your service wires. There are many different applications for this type of service. Simply contact your power company and discuss what can be done in your particular area. Talking about all this renovation work, there's also demolition. If you plan on demolishing your home, or even if you just plan on moving it, make sure to call with plenty of notice so that we can make arrangements to have your service disconnected properly. Failure to do so not only puts workers at risk, but also your neighbors. Believe it or not, these homes were all found demolished with live wires still attached. There's one last thing you should know about your electrical entrance as a homeowner. Remember the attachment point I talked about at the start of the video? Another common problem any lineman will run into is a call or as a homeowner suddenly notices the wires feeding their home are hanging awfully low. What happens here is usually that the clevis pulls out of the side of the house, leaving the wires to hang from nothing but the connections that go into the weather head. Should this happen, we typically do not reinstall the leg bolt into the side of your home. Seeing as where it is already pulled out, you may need some further reinforcements put into place before the wires can be properly attached. This should be repaired immediately as further damage will quickly ensue. Most times, this can be done fairly easily by any qualified electrician. Alright guys, that's it. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Bob's Decline. We've got a pretty exciting year and we've got tons more videos about line work coming at you next year.